Well, boys and girls, time for just a little, 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 little bit more flipping class. We're talking more about this here, my good friend and yours, the cell membrane. Specifically, we're continuing our discussion here about how they're different from plastic baggies and that they're a mosaic with all these different proteins stuck in it. We're going to be looking at a type of protein today that allows for a very special type of transport moving in the wrong direction. So molecules naturally want to move from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. However, they are also able to move against that concentration gradient as well. That would be moving from an area of, from an area of low concentration to an area of higher concentration. And that's going to obviously require a special protein for that to happen called a transport protein. Here is a picture depicting that. You've got your phospholipid bilayer. See all your delicious little phospholipids in there. You can see these big ear-like looking things. Those are transport proteins. They're taking these molecules and they're moving them against their concentration gradient from an area of low to high. And of course, that's going to require energy, so the cell is going to have to extend to ATP, and so we call this active transport, because the cell is not, no, not taking a passive role, it's taking an active role, active transport. Here's a few examples. There are ion pumps. These are actually how your muscles contract ions. Those are charged particles, so they can't move through. In addition to that, in order for the contractions of your muscles to work, they actually have to keep pushing these pushing these against their concentration gradient to build up the action potential. And so, yeah. Also happens in protein synthesis, which will be coming in a later unit. Chloride channels, which are exciting. And the salt processing pumps, your, uh, your kidney. Your kidney helps process salt out of your uh, blood, and especially active in marine organisms. They're pumping salt in extra excessive amounts out of the blood, and they're pumping it back into a very salty medium, aka salty waste and salt water. So, you can also move, uh, so that's active transport, you can also move things uh, using vesicles. If you want to move things that are really, really large, or lots and lots of little things, you can use vesicles, and this is actually how that protein synthesis and trafficking pathway works, how the exportation of proteins happens. It's inside a vesicle. You may be asking yourself, why is it that the vessels can interact with the membrane? And the answer is because they're all made out of that same phospholipid bilayer again. So here are the two types. There's exocytosis, when the vesicle moves up and pushes things out. There's endocytosis, where the vesicle envelops and pulls it in, which is exciting. So again, exocytosis movement out of the cell, endocytosis movement into the cell using vesicles, changing the conformation of the cell membrane. So as you guessed, this requires a preposterous amount of energy. There are some examples like uh, neurotransmitters, thinking occurs this way. Hormone secretion, they're made on the rough ER, sent over to the Golgi, packed in vesicles, and sent out into the extracellular space, and then the bloodstream, for example, the pancreas and whatnot. Uh, parasites do this as well. Macrophages, when they're eating those bacteria, they're enveloping it in a gigantic vesicle which is pretty cool, a lot of endocytosis. The two examples are phagocytosis, which is a cell eating, cell devouring, and there's also pinocytosis, which is cell drinking. There it is. Don't forget to uh, have your whisks ready next time I see you in class. Thanks for watching, everybody.